In this instructional video, we're going to go through the basics of soldering. Uh, but before we do that, we need to cover a few safety precautions. The soldering iron has two ends to it. One end, which is about 370 degrees. That's the end that we don't want to touch with our fingers. It's the end that's going to be melting the solder. The other end is quite cool and safe to touch. Now, if you do happen to get burns in the course of soldering, make sure you run your finger under some cold water for about five minutes. And we also have some burn solve in the first aid kit that you can apply. Talking about burning, we don't burn the table, the power leads, keyboards, your classmates or anything else. The only thing that we're using the soldering iron to heat up is the solder. Uh, when we're not using the soldering iron, we want to put it back in the little holster. And that keeps it safe so it doesn't fall off the table and injure anyone or uh, result in burns. Uh, when we're soldering, we want to make sure we wear safety glasses because solder can flick into your eyes. If there's a piece of metal that's under tension that has molten solder, it can flick up and flick into your eyes. Also, when you're trimming off component leads, those component leads can flick into your eyes. Now, you might be amazing at soldering, but the guy sitting next to you might not be. So make sure you're wearing your safety glasses to protect your eyes. Also, when you finish soldering, make sure you wash your hands. The solder contains about 40% lead, and it's something that we want to make sure that you don't ingest. So wash your hands with soap and warm water. Finally, use the fume extractors on the tables to avoid breathing in the solder fumes. Not very good for you. So let's move on to actually the process of soldering. We want to firstly hold the soldering iron like a pencil, not like a dagger. We want to clean the soldering iron before each time we use it. And the soldering iron tip starts oxidizing, uh, which tarnishes the tip and makes it look not so shiny. And this means we don't get very good heat transfer as well, so we want to make sure we get good heat transfer. So we wipe it through the brass filings, and once we've done that, it should go nice and shiny again. When we're actually trying to solder, we want to heat the pad on the circuit board and the component lead up at the same time with the soldering iron tip. Once they've been heated up, takes about a second, apply some solder and the solder should just flow into the joint because the joint will be nice and hot. We then remove the solder and then we remove the soldering iron. So the soldering iron is the first thing that goes in and the last thing that comes out. Once we've removed the soldering iron, we want to allow the joint to cool for about five seconds before we move anything, otherwise we might get a dry solder <coughs> joint. That's the basic process of soldering. Now I'll we'll go through and show you some video demos of how we actually assemble the Arduino board that you'll be doing in the labs. We'll take one of our components, the resistor in this case. We bend the legs over so that it will fit neatly through the holes. We put it in the appropriate place by following the diagram that's provided in the notes. Then what we need to do is, you'll notice the tip of the soldering iron is a bit tarnished. We use the filings and before every joint we want to give it a good clean. Just poke it in and out a few times and it will become nice and shiny. So once we've cleaned it, the technique to soldering is we touch the pad and the, the joint for a second or two, let it heat up, then we apply some solder, we remove the solder and we remove the soldering iron again. So once again, touch it, let it heat up, we apply some solder, remove the solder and remove the soldering iron. The joints that we should get should look like mini volcanoes, nice and neat. Solder should be all the way around the pad and should rise to a peak towards the wire. Once we've soldered them, we can trim them off nice and close down to the base and we can continue our soldering. For the rest of this video, we'll quickly go through and solder the remainder of the components, starting with the 10K resistor.
Next we do our diodes. And when we're choosing what to solder, we basically want to solder the shortest components first. Uh, this will stop components falling out later on as we try and solder them because they're too tall and they don't support properly once we're upside down. These diodes have a black stripe on them. See the black stripe there? We need to line it up with the white stripe that's on the board. The white stripe there, the black stripe there, because these components are polarised, which means they need to be in the right way around to work. Okay, once we've put in the diodes, the next thing we can put in is the crystal oscillator. We can add the switch in as well. Sometimes it helps with these switches just to straighten out the legs a little bit. Help them go in nice and easily. The other trick is, if you want to stop the components falling out when you turn it upside down to solder it, if you bend the legs out by about 30 degrees or so, it will hold them in place nicely for us. So we can solder the switch in. Solder our crystal oscillator in. And give it a trim. Next one we put in is the IC socket holder. Remembering always to give our soldering iron a good clean before we use it. This one's a bit more susceptible to moving, so we need to kind of solder in a couple of leads first, and then the IC socket holder shouldn't move, it should stay in place. And we just go through and solder each of those pins. Need to ensure that we don't create bridges between the pins, so need to be fairly accurate with how we're soldering. Okay, after that, the next thing to do is the small ceramic capacitors. We have five of these in total. So C1, C2, and C3. 
or all the ones labeled 104. There are 100 microfarads. And then we have two smaller ones, C5 and C6. They're the ones labeled 22. They're the 22 nanofarad capacitors. So we'll turn them over. And bend the leads over a little. For each of these capacitors, it doesn't matter which way we place them in. And we'll give them all a good trim. Next thing to put in is our LED. Now there's a longer lead and a shorter lead on this. And we line up the shorter lead with the line that's on the board there. Now you'll, on the LED, if you look at it carefully, there's also a rounded side, which is on the longer lead, and a flat side, which is on the shorter lead. So we learnt line our flat side up. So push that one in. And while we're going, we might just put the USB connector in as well. Okay, next we've got our small electrolytic capacitor. Now this capacitor down one side has minus signs and the other side doesn't have plus signs but that's the positive side. So the positive side we line up with the plus on the board which also happens to be the longer lead. So if we put that one in and we may as well put this voltage regulator in at the same time. We'll be working on a similar sort of area. So we'll solder these two up. And we'll give them all a trim. When we're giving it a trim, it's another time we want to make sure we're wearing our safety glasses because we could get those leads flick up and flick us in the eye. Okay, the final thing to put in are these little headers. Now we need a header of four and we need two headers of seven, so we just snap them off. Alternately, we can cut them off as well. So we'll put the 4 in first. So the 4 goes in just near the USB connector, and the 4 is the one that's pointing up. This allows us access with a few extra pins to interface things to the Arduino. Now, for example, if we're doing serial communications, we have access to those transmit and receive pins.
Next we want to put in these headers. Now this is the most common mistake in this lab and the most annoying one to fix. The headers need to go in the bottom and we solder them on this side of the board rather than on the other side of the board. So the headers are pointing below and we put both headers in. We need to make sure they're nice and straight when we're, we're soldering them and we make sure we solder on this side. They're a real nuisance to remove if you solder it the wrong way around. We'll just solder one on each first. And that will hold them in position. Now we can solder the remainder. There we go, and our Arduino board's finished. Final thing we need to do is if you take it up to one of your demonstrators, they'll check it over and make sure there's no solder bridges or bad solder joints in there. That one's pretty good. And they'll put a microcontroller in there and test it out for you and make sure it's all working.